Hi, this is J. Carl Ganter, Managing Director of Circle of Blue. For almost a century, water providers and food producers in California have taken on one of history's most ambitious projects. China was built by hydrologists and Roman aqueducts watered an empire. They focused on one thing, moving water where it won't go on its own. California's 80-year-old system of canals, the State Water Project, and the federally financed Central Valley Water Project stitched together an audacious hydrological network, 1,200 miles of aqueducts, canals, and pipelines. Together, both systems can deliver about a million acre-feet, that's 3.6 trillion gallons of water for agricultural, municipal, and industrial use. This water all comes from the snow fields and streams of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. But snowpack levels are among the lowest they've been since record-keeping began, and the state is in the midst of its worst drought in history. A new report from Utah State University says that climate change is shifting California's water supplies. This is amplifying older, persistent challenges like groundwater pollution. The need to better understand the state's intersecting trends in water use have never been more urgent. With Choke Point Index, our teams at Circle of Blue set out to advance this critical story using the best data, images, and on-the-ground reporting available. Our photographers captured the faces of the people most affected. Our data miners pulled mountains of data from federal, state, and local nonprofit sources, and our writers put these trends into critical context. Since 2009, Circle of Blue has worked with Google Research, ClickView, and others to find new ways to assemble and present key data. Aubrey Ann Parker, our lead data analyst, will take you on a tour of California's water use data from the past 20 years. You'll see how it relates to population demographics and water contamination in the eight counties of the Central Valley. It's one of the most productive and at risk agricultural regions in the nation. I'm Aubrey Ann Parker, Chief Data Analyst for Circle of Blue. Our researchers pulled water withdrawal data from the US Geological Survey. They publish data every five years. They have data going back to the 1950s, but they only started collecting it at a county level in 1985. This is the 1985 total water withdrawal map for the state of California down to a county level. We can click through the toggles at the top and it'll show us how that intensity changes every five years up to 2005. That's the last year that the data is available from the USGS. The 2010 data won't be out until later this fall. These eight counties that are outlined in light blue rely heavily on supplies from the San Joaquin Delta. This region is called the Central Valley, and it's home to half of the state's irrigated land. These graphs over here on the right show statistics for the whole state. This bar chart in the middle shows total water withdrawals and how they've changed from 1985 to 2005. It's broken up into three major sections. Agriculture is in dark blue, industrial use is in medium blue, and domestic supplies are in light blue. If we click on it, it opens in a separate tab and we can see more detail. We'll go back to the map. Note that in 2005, more than 92% of Californians got their water from a public supply, compared with 86% nationally. But as we can see here in the bar chart, water delivered to the home made up less than 10% of the state's total water withdrawals. So yes, it's important to take short showers, but most water supplies go toward farming, as is the case globally. Agriculture is California's biggest water user, using half the state's total water withdrawals and three quarters of its freshwater withdrawals. When you look at huge data sets, you start to see glaring holes. In 2000, the USGS didn't collect numbers on domestic public supplies or water that was coming to people's homes from a public utility. That's the green, which shows the difference between the total water withdrawals and the agriculture water withdrawals, the two fields that they did collect numbers on. Despite that green hole, we still see a general trend. Total water use has gone down. Ag withdrawals have gone down by about 20%, while domestic have actually gone up by 30%. Still, total withdrawals have gone down by about 4 billion gallons per day over the past two decades. About one third of the total withdrawals occurred in these eight counties over here in the Central Valley, which we can see in this pie chart. This 30% in light blue corresponds to the water withdrawals that occurred in these eight counties. 
Only 10% of the state's population live in the Central Valley, though, as we can see in this pie chart up here of population. Again, the light blue is for the Central Valley, 10%. If we go back to the map and we click on a county, we get a pop-up that shows us slightly more in-depth analysis of what's going on in that county. We still have the bar chart breakdown of total water withdrawals into agriculture, which is the dark blue, industrial, which is the medium blue, and domestic, which is the light blue. We have it from 1985 to 2005, but this is only for Fresno County, whereas this over here was for all of California. We also have some other graphs too. This pie chart shows information on race statistics, which we got from the 2010 U.S. Census. We also have some stats down here on high school graduation rates, unemployment rates, voter turnout rates. Interesting to note that jobs in agriculture, forestry, fishing, hunting, and mining made up 2.4% of California's total jobs in 2010. But in Fresno County, these jobs made up 9.9%, which is much higher. In Fresno County, there's a higher percentage of households living at or below the poverty line, too. 30% in Fresno County compared with 21.5% in California. Children were at more at risk of living below the poverty line, 38.7% in Fresno County compared with 22% at the state level. Another stat we see here is that voter turnout in the last three elections have been 5 to 9% lower than the state average. These demographic statistics help when we're talking about why this region is described by some as the poor and vulnerable. Vulnerable to what? Well, water contamination for one. It's well documented that water quality in this region is quite bad. There are many contaminants to worry about, and the California Department of Public Health has done testing to monitor the situation throughout the entire state. Water systems were tested multiple years in a row, and many water systems had more than one well within that system that were tested. More than that, some wells were tested multiple times within one year. But also, sometimes a well would be tested one year and not another year. Not to mention that there were wells that weren't tested at all. This is another example where we found holes in big data. We decided to start with arsenic, and that's what this map here is showing. This is actually a live link, so we can click on it, and it'll take us to another Fusion Tables map that is more detailed, because we thought it was just too much to put in one map. So why did we choose arsenic? For one thing, it's an element that can be related to industrial and agricultural processes, which is what our choke point index stories were talking about, and it's more easily understood than a lot of toxins that have been tested by the state. Nitrates, nitrites, DBCP, to name just a few. If we sneak away from the Fusion Tables demo for just a second, Here's an infographic that we made back in 2011 to help people understand some big key facts about arsenic. It's both naturally occurring in the Earth's crust and is artificially produced during agricultural and industrial processes. When the Environmental Protection Agency lowered the arsenic standard from 50 parts per billion to only 10 in 2001, there were 3,000 systems that were serving 11 million people that were in violation across the entire United States. A decade later, there were still a thousand systems that were not in compliance that were serving 1.1 million people. California was the state with the most. In 2010, California had 144 systems that were not in compliance, affecting 450,000 people. Going back to our Fusion Tables map, in the Central Valley counties, the state had arsenic test results from 2006 to 2013. Like I said, some sites were tested multiple times per year, while others were only tested sporadically, and some were never tested at all. But we did the best with what we had available. More on that in a bit. Another issue that we ran into was getting the data into manageable, yet representative regional areas. What I mean by that is that it's not good data practice to average all the tests in one county and say that that county had an arsenic level of that average, because what if it was only one well that was testing poorly, and it was testing really poorly, while well, all the other wells were testing okay? It would be better to break it down into smaller, bite-sized pieces, but California doesn't have levels of government that are smaller than counties, like we do here in Michigan with our townships. Sure, we could have looked at cities, which are smaller than counties, but that would rule out all the rural people who don't live within the city limits. So ultimately, we decided to show this arsenic data on a single water system level, averaged over all the tests from all the seven years, as well as by averaging all the systems within a zip code. That's what you see here, are the zip code averages. Also notice that we still have the county lines drawn in light blue. If I toggle at the top, that turns on the individual water systems. So we can see how that compares with the average. Sometimes a zip code can be okay in light green or dark green, but it can have a particular system that is yellow or orange, or maybe even red. And we wanted you to be able to decipher between these. 
again, it's that idea of one well that tests hot compared to a bunch that don't, or vice versa. How do we pick the colors? Well, another thing we noticed while doing this project was that there were different standards, or sometimes no standards at all, for data based on who was collecting it. That's another example of holes that can exist in big data. So rather than creating our own system of colors and scales, we did some research and we saw that the USGS had come up with this color and this scale that we used. Since 10 parts per billion is the limit for arsenic, anything under 3 is this green color here. Anything between 3 and 5 is this slightly darker green color here. Anything between 5 and 10 is still technically under the limit, but it's starting to get to where you'd wonder whether you should do something about it. So that's why it's in yellow. Between 10 and 30 is orange, and anything over 50 is red. So notice that most of Fresno County is doing OK in green. But there are parts that came back sort of high in yellow and over the limit in orange. If I click on a zip code, it gives me a breakdown so that I can compare how my zip code is doing compared to its neighboring zip code. I can see that the average of my zip code was tested up here, 11.6. Note that that's above the 10 parts per billion, which is recommended by the EPA. I can also see the other different systems that have been tested from 2006 to 2013 within these two zip codes that sit right next to each other. There are sometimes neighboring zip codes all grouped together like this, and the multiple systems in each zip code are listed over here on the right for that grouping. I can close this, and then I can see that I have these individual water systems toggled on. You can toggle them off or toggle them back on. These show the individual systems that have been tested and what their average was between 2006 to 2013. The size of the marker for a particular site matters. If the population served by that water system is between 0 and 250, then the marker is just a small circle. If it's between 250 and 5,000 people, then it's a large marker with no black dot in the middle. And if the population served is greater than 5,000, then it's a large marker with a black dot in the middle. Fortunately, we only have two large systems that are in Fresno County that are orange. But still, notice that we have quite a few red dots. If we click on one of these, we get a pop-up with even more information on what's going on there. We get the official system name, its system number, which are from the California Department of Public Health. And we get the average arsenic concentration over the last seven years of data collection. And we also get the address plus the population served, 750. We hope that this tutorial has helped you to understand how to use our Fusion Tables mapping tool. We also hope that it's given you some context as to why we chose the stats and demographics that we did, as well as where the holes are in the big data. By understanding where the holes exist, we have a better idea of what kind of stats need to be taken in the future. We encourage you to play around with our mapping tools, both the water use map and the arsenic map. And for those of you who are interested, feel free to make a copy of our Google Spreadsheets and play around with the raw data yourself. We've also got lots of graphs that we made that are housed there, but that didn't make the final cut into this simplistic tutorial. Play around. Dig in. What trends do you see? Let us know on Facebook or by tweeting to at circleofblue or by emailing us at data at circleofblue.org.